Hello, I'm George Bowman. I uh, will be going over a couple Walt Whitman poems. Um, they really embody the essence of war and what it would be like to be in war. So that's why I chose these, and I call this A Look in a War by George Bowman. Sorry about the lighting. It's uh, I can't focus on myself and the computer at the same time. A look into war. Before I start talking about the poems, we need to know a little history of Walt Whitman. He was born May 31st, 1819 in Huntington, Long Island. His life, Whitman worked as a journalist, a teacher, a government clerk, and was a volunteer nurse during the Civil War. A lot of Whitman's inspiration for a majority of his poems came from his experience as a volunteer nurse and from his brother's participation in the Civil War. His brother was also wounded during his service. Whitman published many works. His most famous work was Leaves of Grass, which was a collection of his poetry, which these three poems came out of this book that I'm about to go over. Whitman was also very interested in government and supported the abolishment of slavery. The poet died on March 26, 1892. The cause of death was tuberculosis. The autopsy revealed that one lung collapsed completely and the other was working at one-eighth the capacity. His heart was surrounded by a large number of abscesses and about two and a half quarts of water. Whitman was buried in Camden Cemetery and eventually his family was added to it. So, the three poems of war are Viggle Strange I Kept on the Field One Night, and March in the Ranks Hard Pressed in the Road Unknown, A Sight in Camp in the Daybreak Gray and Dim. All three of these poems are one. They all mean basically the same thing. Well, not the same thing, but they all embody a different element of war. Um, these elements of war be suffering, violence, brotherhood, sacrifice and morality all these elements make the reader experience the essence of war so the first one i'm going to go over is vagal strange i kept on the field one night which is the poem of brotherhood this poem is about two soldiers one who dies and one who stays by the other side the imagery in this poem is very strong and places the reader by the dead soldier's side. The reader gets a sense of what it would be like to stand by a fallen comrade and really embodies a feeling of brotherhood. The strongest lines from this poem, I think, are as follows. Found you in death, so cold, dear comrade. Found your body, son, of responding kisses, never again on earth responding. Barred your face in starlight, curious to see Cool blue the moderate night wind. Long there and then in Vigil I stood, dimly around me the battlefield spreading. Vigil wondrous and Vigil sweet, there in the fragrant silent night, but not a tear fell, not even a long drawn sigh. Long, long I gazed. The narrator calls the soldier his son. And I think it's to embody a father lying with their dying son. The narrator even digs the soldier's grave and says, And there and then, and bathed by the rising sun, my son in his grave, in his rude dug grave, I deposited. The commitment the narrator goes through just to bury his comrade is beautiful. It just shows the bond between soldiers. So, time for the next poem, which is a march in the ranks, hard pressed, and a road unknown. This is the poem of violence and morality of war. This poem starts off with a narrator marching through the woods with his unit retreating from a battle. The battle had a lot of lost soldiers. They came to a church that was changed into a wartime hospital. This transformation from a church into a hospital is ironic because the church is turned into a hell with a lot of suffering and death and wounded soldiers. It's really just a terrible place and a church is normally a place of God and just not 
filled with death and suffering. The imagery Whitman creates in this poem is impeccable. Very brutal and gruesome. So, the violence of war. The violence described in the poem is gruesome. These lines from the poem place the reader in the church and really makes one question what it would be like to be in war. At my feet, more distinctly a soldier, a mere lad in danger of bleeding to death, he is shot in the abdomen. I staunch in the blood temporarily, the youngster's face is white as a lily. Then before I depart, I sweat my eyes over the scene, faint to absorb it all, faces, varieties, postures, beyond description, most in obscurity, some of them dead, surgeons operating, attendants holding lights, the smell of ether, the odor of blood, the crowd, oh, the crowd of the bloody forms, the yard outside, also filled... Some on the bare ground, some on planks or stretchers, some in the in the death spasm sweating. An occasional scream or cry, the doctor shouted orders or, or calls. The glisten of the little steel instruments catching the glint of the torches. Well, next up is the morality of war. The morality of war, the poem ends with the morality of war. After the narrator sees all this, the all this violence, his commander screams, Fall in, my men, fall in. The narrator then leaves into the darkness and has to put all that death behind him and march through the night. With this quote, Whitman criticizes war, resuming, marching ever in darkness, marching on in the ranks, the unknown roads still marching. Whitman criticizes how war just goes on and on and never stops, and how the soldier must deal with all the death and suffering. It's definitely something that's hard to imagine. The soldiers are just, just to walk away from all that death and forget about it. It's definitely something that's crazy that our soldiers have to deal with. Next poem I'm going to go over is A Sight in the Camp in the Daybreak Gray and Dim, which is the poem of sacrifice and death. The poem centers around a soldier that awakens to death and suffering. The narrator meets three men, one old, one young, and one middle-aged. The old man is used to symbolize the wear and tear of the war. His hair was well grayed and flesh was sunken about the eyes. The gray hair and the sunken flesh is used to show the effects of war on someone who has been at it for a while. It transformed the man into a sullen, battered person. The young boy is used to symbolize, symbolize the, like, the sacrifice of anyone in the ability to, to win the war. The young boy hadn't even hit puberty, yet his cheeks yet blooming, and is supposed to fight in the war. I guess everybody counted. Which is, it's just wrong to have children fight in a war and Whitman just put that in there just to embody that. The middle-aged man was used to symbolize the sacrifice of life for one's country. Whitman symbolizes this man as Christ because this man sacrificed his life in order for others' freedom. Just as Christ sacrificed himself for the ability of us to go to heaven. All these poems show us what it's like to be a part of war and all the sacrifices, violence, and death we would have to endure in order to be a soldier. I made this video to show everyone what our soldiers sacrifice and how enduring war is. So I think we need to thank our soldiers that fight and sacrifice their lives for our freedom. And thank you for listening to my presentation. Hope it was okay. Sorry about the lighting once again. Thanks. Bye.